Good afternoon. Um, I wanted to uh, start uh, saying that I'm really honored um, being invited here and have the possibility to speak to you. Um, um, comparing with all, most of you are historians, actually, most of my career um, I spent looking at the future um, at the university. I, <clears throat> I studied foresight, and um, the first PhD was in law, uh, in journalism, and the second uh, PhD after 10 years in law. And I worked for four universities that tried to see how the future is going to be. Um, so, uh, okay. <laughs> so you probably may, uh, may ask yourself, so what I'm doing here? Uh, uh, coming from the city, it probably is difficult to pronounce, uh, talking about past, about history. Uh, so I, I just would like to explain. I've spent more than five years doing research on, uh, on the volunteer uh, on the volunteers from Poland. And these volunteers from Poland, you may see, uh, you may see in your um, in your booklet. Uh, Polish volunteers, but they were not, the po volunteers from Poland were not only Polish. Maybe today, when we are the homogeneous country, you may say, um, yes, the volunteers from Poland would be Polish, but most of the history, Poland actually was a mixture of different cultures, a hodgepodge of different cultures. So these volunteers from Poland were Ukrainians, were Polish, of course, were Jewish, were Germans, uh, and they were, they were from all over, I mean, all over the, um, the, the part of Poland. And their situation when they came here, when they came here was very, um, very difficult because they already, most of them, knew what was going on in Soviet Union. Just to give you an example, one of these camarades, when he was politely invited uh, to join a committee in uh, in the Soviet Union, he went to the Polish police and said, please arrest me, so I don't have to go to Soviet Union, um, because they already knew, already knew what was going on. The Ukrainians knew very well what was going on uh, with the big hunger. If you know, uh, Stalin decided, didn't like the Ukrainians too much, decided or to send them all to, uh, to Siberia, uh, or uh, try or to took away all the food. The situation was so bad that people were eating even children. So some children, were, the parents were saying to their children, don't leave home because you risk to be eaten. Uh, more than a million people died. So these people were conscious about what was going on in the Soviet Union. And still, those, they knew as well that the belief as well in this um, in the left wing or let's socialist or communist idea, most of them spent years and years in prison uh, <clears throat> to fight for this left wing ideas. Um, and at the same time, 1937, 1938, you know the processes started against the communists. Another story I can tell you was actually interesting for me as well. I heard it in Sweden from those communists and um, socialists, yes, they, uh, that were in prison in Poland. Is when the Soviet came to Poland, they they were advised, knowing the experience, not to tell that they spent their life, I mean, they spent so many years in prison. And one of them uh, told this story that when he was uh, asked uh, to go to the police and uh, <clears throat> talk about his past, yes, because a colleague said that he was a communist. Uh, so they showed him pictures of Marx and Engels and other important um, philosophers. And they asked him what he thinks about, and he knows what he knows about them. And he said, Imagine a person who, was, who spent eight years in prison for communist idea. He looked at these pictures and said, I don't know, I, I, think, I think the one looks like a um, maths teacher. I think yes. 
so they let him away, yes? So the, uh, I think when we talk about, um, about looking at the, at the archives in Russia as well, uh, not because they're Russian, Polish, or from wherever country, but because they are made as well by people yes, who had to justify their, exist, their income, let's say, uh, by, by say that producing information, yes? So I would not look at these sources as, as, um, as um, very, very reliable. And for this reason and the other reason that they, they lied, they lied to save their life. So um, as a journalist, we always say that one source is no source. Um, <clears throat> but going, uh, going back to my, to my um, to, pre to, to the main point of my presentation, um, I would like to explain you three, three main aspects of this um, um, of, um, of my uh, of my talk. So the first point uh, is about the research itself. The second is about the motives, yes, that I already mentioned. Uh, and the third one uh, is about uh, the um, participation and, and then uh, about uh, the, um, the, present, the, the participation in the war uh, of, uh, of uh, those volunteers and the way as well it was presented in the propaganda, in the Soviet propaganda and nowadays as well. Probably you know that I come from a country where we have a very different um, political um, politics of history. Uh, actually, we don't have the democratic, uh, demo and it's democracy. It's not the main point. The main point is the national, national aspect. Um, <clears throat> so, um, dividing, the, dividing the motives, yes, for this research, I started uh, more than 10 years ago, it was, it was a scientific. My first PhD was about freedom of expression. And I was thinking, how come I can hear only one side of the story and not the other side? Why, why only people who fought for Franco could say, yes, my grandparents came to fight for Franco. And the other part is better to um, not to say anything, yes? And, uh, <clears throat> uh, there was as, it's as well, of course, a personal reason. The personal reason is that my grandparents uh, came, uh, came to Paris and then went to Paris and then from Paris wanted to go to Spain. My, uh, talking about women, my grandmother, uh, unfortunately, uh, she could not go because she was pregnant, uh, but my grandfather came, came, to, uh, came to Spain in 19... 38. He was waiting more than a year uh, to come here. Pro probably, we know, from what we know, from what I could find, uh, the documents, um, he came probably even earlier, but it's um, honest to say 1938. Um, so <clears throat> the, the reason was as well personal, because we, my father was born after my grandfather died or dis uh, um, disappeared. So the idea was just to know where he died, why he, why he came here, um, what, uh, what was his motives, um, where is his grave, these very basic questions. And as well, of course, um, why today um, the other part of the story, yes, the other side of the story, um, it's um, the other perspective yes, of this war uh, in my country. It's, um, they say it's not only neglected, but it's just cancelled. Uh, in the last year, uh, the name of almost all the, uh, uh, almost all the cities in Poland had to change the name of uh, the brigadiers from Poland, from, uh, from Poland, yes, which was called Dombrovstadze. And now it has been changed to other name because this name is forbidden. Uh, it's, um, it's just another perspective. So what kind of, doc what kind of sources I found? This is actually interesting um, that uh, just the, the research was interesting uh, because the so some of the sources I, I found 
Um, not in Moscow. I've never been in Moscow, with all respect. Beautiful city, I've never been there. I just found them in the Pyrenees. Um, and I think that maybe this is, um, um, this is just a conclusion from this point, that you still f have many, many places where these sources are uh, that people keep in their private houses uh, these documents. And I was, my, my um, approach was not as a historian in this moment, was more as an investigative journalist. And um, I had to pay as well for these documents. And so that's, that's, an, that's uh, actually another, um, another topic, but uh, just to re invite you to reflect, because maybe apart from the, uh, from the Moscow archives, there are still interesting documents here around. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I would like as well to say something about, about, those, who, uh, about those who came here and about, uh, and about my grandfather. Uh, he, was, um, he was a very uh, was a tall person, almost two meters high. So um, I know you're all intellectuals here and don't like stereotypes, but I just feel free to close your eyes and imagine, um, and imagine this classical Russian big guy um, from the uh, American movies. It was him. If we would enter, he probably would see him. Um, at those times when everybody was 162, he was a this big guy with blue, blue eyes, and that probably was his problem as well. Because when he and when he came to to Spain with all this mess you had here, uh, he was sent he was sent to the German uh, to the German um, uh, division, where he, he studied Spanish, he studied fr French, but his German was not probably very good. Um, that's too, um, I don't know a lot about my grandfather for obvious reason, but I know, um, I know just two, two stories that I would like to tell you before the war. I mean, the one, uh, he has a very big, very big and very happy person as well. He was very positive, even the prison guards, as far as I heard, liked him. But there was one story was this, that the, in, the, in prison they kept this big um, Alsatian, uh, Alsatian dog who used to, who was trained to jump on, on this, on the intimate part uh, of, the, of the body. Uh, and the story was that well, he knew about this and he strangled this dog. And that's, that's why he was like, be became uh, very liked by other prisoners. And the other story is he used to escape more than once from the prison. And <clears throat> once he escaped and ended up in, uh, uh, escaped, from, uh, escaped to my grandmother's uh, house. And uh, after spending, uh, I don't know, night or day, well, okay, night, she jumped off the window just into the, uh, into the arms of a Polish policeman uh, and spent another four years in prison. So <laughs> just if you, are, if you have this situation, think that some, some others uh, have um, uh, bigger trouble uh, than then you have four years in prison for, uh, for, uh, for this um, beautiful night. They, but they both, after leaving the, uh, leaving the prison, they went, they went from Prague. My grandmother, uh, she had family in Italy uh, she, and in, in, in Switzerland. So she could go to Paris before. And she waited for him. Uh, and he arrived to Paris and from Paris to, uh, to Barcelona. Uh, I have these letters, uh, the letters that are re written um, by T Zygmunt Toruncik and a famous Polish uh, volunteers uh, and other volunteers who try to help him, uh, help my grandmother to, f uh, to find my father, because as I said, bef uh, my grandfather, as I said before, he ended, uh, he ended up, uh, which is actually interesting from this letter, Zygmunt Toruncik is saying, I met uh, Michal, Michael, Michael uh, but he thought, and I wanted him to join our division, but he said he has to go through many formalities. And I think, uh, you come to this world, <laughs> and actually I studied this world for, uh, 
very carefully. The more I study it, the less I understand uh, how it really went through. It's, um, um, I can imagine that maybe this was one of the reasons, um, unfortunately, you lost. Uh, so you, go, you arrive here and you spend two months or three months to do all the formalities, and at the end of the day, you finish up in a division just because you are tall and have blue eyes. Uh, in a German division and not in, and not it's in your division. Um, <clears throat> um, but what I wanted to say from this letter is that sometimes I find I, I've, I've, I found myself um, um, yes, um, um, I, find, I find myself difficult to, 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 find, to, to read such a personal letter. But um, these people, we're, we're like brothers and sisters, yeah? They're really uh, very, very sincere and very helpful. When my, my, when my uh, father disappeared uh, in, um, in this war, uh, he, uh, from what I learned, he went, uh, he was uh, injured. He was injured in his eyes, and nevertheless, he went to fight, being injured. Um, and... <clears throat> that probably he, he had this feeling that there's no alternative really to go back. Uh, but <clears throat> from, from these letters, I can see how they were open and sincere and helpful. Um, one, of, one of them is writing, for example, that uh, oh, no, no, I'm sitting here, maybe that's why the women were not allowed, I'm sitting here under the tree uh, dress in an Adam dress, which means naked, uh, drink, exchanging, ex exchanging cigarettes for wine, uh, but please send me more cigarettes. Also, they disappear, for example, uh, they are mm, in the post, but the, the Republican post has to smoke as well, so don't worry, but send them, send them. And they, 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 this, these letters that are so, as I said, so open, so sincere, for sure will not make uh, were not written uh, for the for the path for the future to um, to build the um, to create the myth of brigade. If you if you read them, it seems like a really like a real enthusiasm and uh, and great a great friendship, even when they had to leave. And just one of this letter when uh, when Toruncik, one of these Polish volunteers. And another Jewish are saying to my grandmother, try to believe that he's still alive. But he's saying as well, I have to leave Spain. Uh, the dream of my life has finished. And <clears throat> dream of my life has finished. And I'm just, of course, uh, I would like to say many other uh, aspects of this. But I would like just to finish with, uh, with a letter I received from uh, talking about knowledge and about the conscious, about our, our past. So I received a letter uh, at the end, the letters de declaración de reparación y reconocimiento personal del Ministerio de Justicia. I really love this letter for three reasons. I mean, apart from uh, it may be my third PhD, of course, for this is my personal, um, that, uh, my, my, per my personal um, success, but I like it much more for other reasons. Uh, so it's written here <coughs> that, habiendo uh, quedado acreditado que Mikhail Oleksiuk ciudadano ucraniano. And I think that I, uh, I don't know, it's like, it's a common knowledge that, uh, you know, Hamlet was a, pre, was a prince of Dutch, that uh, Indochina uh, is Vietnam, and, and in 1939, uh, if you look at the map, 38, there's the Soviet Union there, and not Ukraine. And it's, uh, I know nomina asunto di Osa, but it's signed by the, uh, by, uh, the Minister of, uh, of, uh, Minister of uh, Justicia, see? And as well, I have to add that I was probably one of the last because you had the deadline, and I submit the documents three days before the deadline. And you have an anticipated election. So, the person who signed this reconocimiento was from the Rajoy government. Probably, it was very trembling his hand, but anyway. So, um, but I just, I just think how, 
uh, you know, the Ukraine got, and uh, Lithuania, Lithuania, all these countries got, got the citizenship, uh, got uh, its, uh, its um, independence in the 90s. Uh, so I really love this document because he recognized uh, your, 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 um, his, um, your government recognized basically my grandfather as probably the only citizen in Europe, uh, not only citizen of Ukraine. There's no more citizens at the time. Um, and yeah, I, think, I find it actually very important as well uh, to introduce these this cla this, um, this classes, this, the lecturers, because um, what, uh, what we miss actually, and we let, the, we let grow the next generation with this idea of seeing one part only of the story. And um, so I would like to very thank you to, to have the possibility to speak here. And um, I hope there's possibility as well to promote, to promote um, as the, volu as the uh, voluntarists and um, uh, work that would as well influence the youth in Poland, uh, not only here in Spain. Thank you very much.